Welcome to NTD News Today. Here are our top stories. Presidential debates. We know the dates for the three events and requirements to participate. Will we see the first third party candidate in decades? Utah voters head to the polls today for a special election to replace Republican Congressman Chris Stewart. How the race could turn out. Asking unvaccinated soldiers to come back. The Army wants soldiers who didn't get the COVID shot to return to service. This after unvaccinated soldiers were deemed a security threat. Modern toys could pose new threats to children. A consumer watchdog report cites microphones, cameras, location trackers, and other features. A walk through celestial stars. A new exhibition called Astralumina will be open to the public at the Queen's Botanical Garden in New York City. This is NTD News Today, live from our NTD Global Headquarters. Here are Stephania Cox and Chris Beers. Welcome and to NTD News Today. We have insights and perspectives on the stories shaping our world. Breaking news, in-depth analysis, and inspiration to power your day. Now for our top stories. Hostage negotiations are at a critical point. Israel's government will reportedly begin voting today to approve a hostage deal with Hamas. An official from Foundation for Defense of Democracies it said 53 hostages are set to be released, including 40 kids and 13 mothers. This could potentially be in exchange for days of ceasefire. We'll have more on this later in the show. From primary to general election debates, we now know the dates and locations for the three debates next year. And you might see a third party candidate on stage for the first time in three decades. The Commission on Presidential Debates announced three dates for general election debates next year. The first one is set for September 16th at Texas State University. The second one is on October 1st at Virginia State and the third on October 9th at the University of Utah. One vice presidential candidate is scheduled for September 25th at Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. To qualify for the events, candidates and their running partners must have at least 15 percent in national polls. Third party candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is averaging almost 17 percent at the moment. He'd be the first third party candidate on stage since Ross Perot in 1992. The campaign for former President Trump says Trump is looking forward to debating President Biden at the events. However, it's not clear whether Biden will join. His team reportedly declined to comment on the recently announced debates. Governor Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley are spending big in Iowa, hoping to make the presidential debate stage that's ahead of the Iowa caucuses in January. The Epic Times found that the candidates spent $10 million on TV ads. They will appear between November and January 15, 2024. DeSantis leads the way with almost $4 million spent. A new super PAC for the Florida governor reportedly spent $500,000 on ads just on Monday. The ads will broadcast on Thanksgiving, and according to The Hill, they will focus on Nikki Haley. Haley, meanwhile, spent just shy of $3 million. Former President Trump's spending comes to about $2.7 million. 90 minutes, no audience. The details are in on a debate showdown between Governors Ron DeSantis and Gavin Newsom. The clash will highlight the differing leadership styles of the two governors. The pair will grapple over economic issues, inflation, immigration, and crime. They'll try to persuade the nation that their vision is what the country needs. Fox News is billing the event as DeSantis versus Newsom, the great red versus blue state debate. Sean Hannity will host the debate on Thursday, November 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern. DeSantis trails former President Trump in most polls for the Republican nomination. While Newsom has thus far ruled out challenging President Biden, some see his recent trips to China and Israel as an attempt to raise his profile for a possible presidential run. Democrats appear to be divided when it comes to Israel's war against the Hamas terror group, and a person's age may reflect where they stand. That's according to a recent Quinnipiac poll. 
In all, 56% of Democrats and Democratic-leaning voters approve of President Biden's handling of the conflict, but when you break it down by age, the poll shows only 24% of those under 35 approve of Biden's response. That's compared to 77% of those 65 and older who support Biden regarding the issue. And that divide is also apparent when it comes to which side they sympathize with more, Israelis or Palestinians. Nearly three quarters of Democrats younger than 35 said Palestinians, while 45% of Democrats 65 and older responded with Israelis. A New York congressman is expected to introduce a resolution denouncing as the slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. A New York Post reported, report cited a copy of the measure sponsored by Representative Anthony Desposito. The New York Republican later confirmed his planned resolution on X. Desposito represents the state's 4th Congressional District. He called the From the River to the Sea chant an anti-Semitic slogan to destroy Israel and eliminate the Jewish people. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib was censured two weeks ago for promoting the catchphrase. Utah voters head to the polls today for a special election to replace Congressman Chris Stewart. Stewart announced in May that he was resigning to care for his ill wife. Republican Celeste Malloy and State Senator Kathleen Reby are competing to represent the state's second district. Malloy is Stewart's former chief counsel. Reby is the minority whip in the Utah State Senate. Malloy has campaigned on issues like improving border security and reining in federal spending. Reby has been advocating for affordable housing and support for labor unions. Malloy won a Republican special primary on September 5th. Reby ran unopposed for her party's nomination. Malloy is the heavy favorite in the Republican-leaning congressional district. Now to Virginia. Brianna Sewell has announced she's running for outgoing Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger's seat. The Democrat currently represents part of Prince William, Virginia, in the state's House of Delegates. Spanberger has signaled her intention to leave Congress next year to run for governor. Brianna Sewell said she hopes to bring a more empathetic perspective to politics. The candidate also said she was taught to, quote, stand up and fight for what is right. And in national politics, a new NBC News poll shows President Biden trailing former President Trump among young voters. Earlier, I spoke with Epic Times reporter Janice Heisel, who's been following this and other election stories closely. Janice, welcome to our show. Thanks for coming on again. To begin with, regarding the NBC poll that shows Trump far out, out uh, streaking Biden in terms of young voters, what do you see as the reasons behind that shift? Well, just with any trend, there are going to be multiple factors. And in this case, what I'm hearing on the ground from those young voters and even some young people who aren't quite voting age, um, they're telling me that they they really are concerned about the state of the country in the economy. That is a major, major factor for these this particular segment of the population. And I think overall, I hear that the economy is really, really on people's minds. Um, I know that a lot of college students tend to go to leftist, liberal kind of institutions that aren't very uh, in favorable to the president. But these people are feeling the pinch from the grocery prices, from the gas prices, and then the immigration is affecting them as well. Um, the the young, young voters, a lot of them are Hispanic. There's a very big population of Hispanic people, and they are raised often in Catholic households. And so for them, the pro-life issue is also um, of, of great importance. Yeah, that's a really interesting spread there of issues. In terms of the young vote, you know, it was important to Biden back in 2020. How important do you think it will be this time around? Well, um, all of the segments, I mean, of course, every candidate is what to courting all these different segments. And that's one of the biggest challenges for any candidate is to um, have policies and come across sincere about those policies to the various factions, whether it's older voters, younger voters, Hispanic voters, black voters, white voters. And so that is that's actually a fascinating component of following all of these campaigns. For sure. And you've been following this quite um, on the ground, as you said, and you've been in Iowa quite a bit lately. What What's the sentiment on the ground there? 
the particular rally that I attended in a little place called Fort Dodge, Iowa, it's a, a very agricultural and industrial area. The population is like 25,000 people. But this high school gymnasium was really, really filled with very enthusiastic Trump supporters. And the reason I say that is it's not just my opinion. I interview people on the ground. And one man I talked to who had been to 33 Trump rallies told me this was one of the most enthusiastic crowds he had seen. For example, they stood on their feet for more than a half an hour before President Trump showed up on stage when they started to sense it was time. Then they stayed on their feet for at least another 20 minutes, the vast majority I was watching. And with Trump leading in a hypothetical matchup with Biden in 2024, how important do you think is Trump's message about the border and his recent endorsement by Governor Greg Abbott? especially as you mentioned, immigration is an issue for many of the voters polled and you, that you've been speaking with. Well, the former president's support seems to be really uh, very strong in Texas anyway, except like almost, you know, if you look across the country, if you look at the maps from the last election and in polling, you'll see that, you know, the, the uh, Urban areas tend to be blue, in, in other words, leaning more toward Democrats and Joe Biden, whereas other non-urban areas, the suburban areas, the rural areas, tend to be more in favor of the Republicans and President Trump. And so, yes, Texas is actually one of the biggest states and has one of the highest numbers of electoral college votes, which is crucial to winning the, that presidential election next year. Right, definitely keep our eye on the ground there. Thank you so much, Janice Heisel, Epic Times reporter. Really appreciate it. Up next, one of former President Trump's co-defendants could have his bond revoked. Why the judge in Georgia is considering bringing him into custody. And the United Auto Workers Union looks to expand its reach, while the UAW's president says workers for non-union automakers should consider unionizing. More in just a moment here on NTD News Today. Did you know African elephants could become extinct in our lifetime? In fact, more than 90% are already gone. If we don't act now, they will disappear forever. But we can't do it alone, because when it comes to saving elephants, it's you plus IFA, the International Fund for Animal Welfare. You plus IFA together can help stop poaching, protect habitats, and save thousands of elephants. Call or go online right now to join IFA.org and give $19 a month only 63 cents a day. You can save elephants and the places they call home. Together, we can fund rangers to stop poachers in their tracks, protect the land elephants need to roam and survive, and provide loving care for those who have been orphaned so they can one day be released back into the wild. But the only way we can do this life-saving work is with you plus IFA. So call or go online with your gift right now. With the monthly support of people just like you, elephants like Moses are alive and thriving today. It takes years of hard work from dedicated teams so orphaned elephants can learn the skills they need to survive in the wild. So please, call now or go online with your monthly gift. You can help provide the urgent care elephants need so this generation won't be the last. And when you use your credit card, you'll get this exclusive membership kit, including your very own IFA t-shirt to show it's you plus IFA standing together to help rescue and care for these majestic creatures. The danger for elephants is more urgent than ever before. That's why we need you. It's going to take all of us to help save elephants before they disappear forever. So please, call right away or go to joinifa.org with your monthly gift. Because together, you plus IFA can save lives. that has true beauty. I imagine it's like a door. The 
artists hold the key to open the door and bring people to a pure world. A world where people are more compassionate. Now turning to former President Trump's Georgia election case. One of the co-defendants in the case, Harrison Floyd, is having his bond reconsidered. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee will be hearing arguments this afternoon on whether to revo revoke Floyd's bond. Floyd was a leader in the organization Black Voices for Trump. He was the only defendant who spent time in jail after his indictment. That's because he's the only one who didn't have a lawyer reach an agreement on bond conditions before he turned himself in the Fulton County Jail. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis last week asked the judge to revoke Floyd's bond. She said Floyd has been attempting to intimidate and contact likely witnesses and his co-defendants in violation of the terms of his release. Floyd's attorneys denied the accusations and called Willis's request a retaliatory measure. The Trump gag order saga continues. A three-judge panel of the D.C. Circuit Court held a hearing regarding Trump's appeal of one of the orders. Judge Tanya Chutkin issued the gag on October 17th. She's the judge presiding over Trump's federal election case. For analysis, we speak with Jesse Benal, a constitutional law attorney for President Trump in his civil cases. Jesse Benal, thank you for joining us. Where are we in the Trump gag order saga after yesterday's hearing? Well, the uh, D.C. Circuit heard argument uh, yesterday morning in the case, and it, it went on for a couple hours. It's not really a surprise with the D.C. Circuit in an important case like this that it goes beyond the, uh, uh, the time allotted for it. Um, the judges were asking good questions, and this was a, a, um, a panel of judges all appointed by their Obama and Biden. Um, and so not exactly a very friendly panel to President Trump, uh, but they asked tough questions of, of both sides. And so I anticipate that you are not going to just see a blanket affirmance of Judge, uh, Judge Chutkin's gag order. I think that they are going to rein her in um, probably a considerable amount. And how does the fact that Trump is running for president factor into all this? Well, it's extremely important. The founders gave us the First Amendment primarily to protect political speech. Uh, when they wrote the First Amendment, they weren't uh, thinking about um, obscene art or they weren't thinking about pornography. They were thinking about the right of the of the people to um, petition their, their government for redress of grievances, to advocate for change, and to have a responsive uh, government. Um, one thing that you see in the Constitution that is really universal is the idea of checks and balances, whether it's you know the different uh, uh, branches of government or whether it is in the Bill of Rights for individuals. The founders were very, very concerned about checking uh, the power of government. And that's what the First Amendment is for. And so when you have the leading candidate for president of the United States that has been told by a judge, um, a uh, quite frankly, very politically unfriendly judge, that um, the President Trump is limited as to what he can say on the campaign trail. That goes yeah. directly to the heart of the First Amendment. Yeah. So what's at stake for Trump in this case? We talked about, uh, you know, what the judges are saying, but what could the next evolution of this gag order look like? Well, we'll see um, what happens with the, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, gag orders have been something that have been severely disfavored um, through the, the history of American jurisprudence um, and because it's what's called a prior restraint on speech, which is what the founders were primarily concerned about. And so, for instance, in the past, um, the Department of Defense wanted to uh, go to court to stop the New York Times and Washington Post 
from reporting on um, classified documents about the Vietnam War. And the Supreme Court of the United States said, nope, what you're asking for is a prior restraint. You cannot do it. Even though it's classified documents about an ongoing war, you cannot do it. So certainly in this case, I expect that a, a fair panel should just strike down the gag order in its entirety. And if it doesn't do that, I think there's a very uh, strong chance that this is going to end up going to the Supreme Court and uh, that the Supreme Court would, um, would act uh, decisively. Now, Jesse, this gag order has had a long and winding journey since it was first imposed on October 17th. Refresh our memory. What was the basis for it in the first place? Well, what the basis for it in, in the first place really is that uh, Jack Smith and, and his gang of prosecutors didn't like what President Trump was saying on social media and his rallies. They didn't like how much he was criticizing them. They didn't like that he was calling out um, the judge for some blatantly political rulings. And so they wanted to shut him up uh, because, I mean, I think it's especially true that they wanted to shut him up when they saw how much these cases were actually helping him politically because they were exposed exposing um, the, the corruption that's currently in our, our justice system right now. So that's what I think uh, prompted Jack Smith to act and seek this, uh, this gag order. And, and for the same reasons, it, it is what got Judge Chutkin to grant the gag order. And just before we go, what's next in this trial? Well, I, I think you're going to see uh, a number of, there already have been a number of motions um, pending about this, some very important motions about the constitutional rights of not just Donald Trump, but all Americans. Um, and uh, th some of those uh, motions, I, I think, will be decided in, in the coming months. And then we'll see how the, the judge decides those. Quite frankly, um, she hasn't really shown much of an interest in being impartial so far. So uh, we'll see exactly what, what happens uh, in, in her courtroom. Uh, but I, um, I suspect that there will be further appeals, uh, unfortunately, as well. All right, Jesse Benal, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. The Army now turning to a new source of possible recruits, unvaccinated former soldiers. This comes after the military kicked out soldiers who refused to get the COVID vaccine. The Army sent a letter to former personnel writing, quote, individuals who desire to apply to return to service should contact their local recruiter for more information. This as the military struggles to draw recruits the Army booted almost 2,000 personnel for not receiving a COVID vaccine. A 2022 statement said unvaccinated soldiers present a risk to the force and jeopardize readiness. Now the vaccine mandate is no longer in effect. Multiple military branches have been struggling to attract new recruits in recent years. The United Auto Workers Union is looking to expand. The president, Sean Fain, is saying workers in non-union automakers should consider joining. They spend billions of dollars on, on consulting groups to come in and discourage workers from wanting a union. Why do they do that? They, they, because the companies know, they, they want the workers not to understand the power they'll have if they join a union. The union secured significant pay raises, improved benefits, and a slew of other concessions. The details were hashed out following six weeks of strikes. Last week, about two-thirds of the workers at General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis voted to approve the new deal. The contract is among the best in the union's 88-year history. Now non-union companies are also increasing their wages and benefits. Fain said this is the momentum from UAW. He added that the time is right for labor unions to grow like they did in the 1930s and 40s. He's specifically eyeing foreign automakers like Toyota, electric vehicle makers like Tesla, and EV battery plants. Congress is demanding answers about Ticketmaster's policies. A Senate committee issued a subpoena to the entertainment company saying it has refused to supply documents about its business practices. Ticketmaster and its parent company Live Nation grabbed some unwanted attention last year when many concert goers had trouble accessing its website to get Taylor Swift tickets. There also were issues with Bruce Springsteen tickets because of their cost. The debacles raised questions about the company's ticket pricing, fees, and resale policies. Senators grilled Live Nation's president during a hearing in January, but the senators say they still have more questions. A spokesperson says the company has voluntarily worked with the Senate committee, subcommittee from the start. 
and has provided extensive information, but wants some of its business practices to remain confidential. And a Senate panel is probing airline fees for baggage, seat selection, ticket changes, and other services. Lawmakers are demanding that the CEOs of five major carriers explain the charges. Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal has asked American Airlines, United Delta, Sprint and Frontier Airlines for a detailed breakdown. The senator wants to know how much they collect from each fee and the reasons behind them. Blumenthal said total revenue from baggage fees increased from $4.9 billion to $6.8 billion between 2018 and 2022. The committee chair also cited a report that found airlines raked in $4.2 billion in seat selection fees. The Department of Transportation last year proposed a requirement to disclose fees the first time an airfare is displayed. A Navy plane overshot a runway and went into a bay in Hawaii yesterday. A spokesperson said the Coast Guard responded, but that rescue operations were quickly called off. Military officials say all nine people aboard made it safely to shore with no injuries. The, PA-8, the P-8A aircraft was landing at a marine base on Kinoa Bay. An oil leak off the coast of Louisiana may have spilled more than a million gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. The Coast Guard says the leak was discovered Thursday near Plaquemines Parish. Authorities say three skimming vessels are working to remove the oil from the ocean's surface. Main Pass Oil Gathering operates the 67 miles of pipeline. The company shut it off Thursday morning. The Coast Guard is still working to figure out the extent of the spill. So far, there are no reports of it impacting the shoreline. Modern toys could be putting children in danger. A consumer watchdog report cited microphones, cameras, location trackers, and other features posed a new threat. One of the report's authors called the findings chilling. The nonprofit cited the kidnapping of an 11-year-old girl he encountered while playing Roblox, one of the most popular online games. She was recovered safely more than 100 miles from her home. The public interest group also referred to a case against Amazon. The federal government alleges that the e-commerce giant kept recordings of children's voices gathered from its Alexa devices. The watchdog advised parents to think twice when purchasing gifts for their children this holiday season. Elon Musk is facing increasing pressure. Lawmakers and advertisers say anti-Semitic content appears frequently on X. Musk previously said he wants free speech on the platform. How is it working out for him? Host of NTD Business, Don Ma, speaks to an analyst. And now joining us is Jeremy Tedesco from Alliance Defending Freedom. Now, Jeremy, let's talk about X, formerly known as Twitter. It's been a little over a year since Elon Musk has taken over. Uh, and from the get-go, you know, he set out to put free speech back into the platform, among other things. So how has he done in this respect, in your expertise? Yeah, I, mean, I think he's done a good job, but there's definitely room for improvement. We've definitely seen him take you know, several different steps from the Twitter files to changing some policies that really opened up the opportunities for speech more so on the platform. But there's still a lot of concerning policies on the books and there's things that he still can do that'll make a big difference. You know, over the past year, a lot has happened, including uh, critiques from different outlets uh, and reports of uh, advertisers leaving the platform. Uh, what, what is your reaction to these kind of things, uh, especially the critiques? Well, I mean, he's been under a lot of pressure, and you know, I think it's great that he's really stood for free speech and made a real case in the public square for the importance of that. There are no other tech companies that are so uh, vociferously trying to defend free speech and how essential it is uh, to democracy and to and to progress. Now, you know whether his his actual running of the company and the decisions he's made uh, comport with his commitments is a question that's that's an open question. A lot of people criticize him. I mean, we're happy with where he's led the company, but we still think there's a lot uh, of changes that he needs to make to make it truly a platform for free speech. Yeah, maybe let's talk a little bit about that. What are some of the changes in your view that still needs to be implemented uh, for this to be better? Yeah, I think he needs to change his hate, the hateful conduct policy. Essentially, he just needs to eliminate it. He limit, eliminated the misgendering policy, which was a great step that had been used to shut down a lot of speech on the critical issue of 
gender identity, you know, the idea, the, the, the concept and, and debate around men per competing in women's sports, for instance. Um, but the hateful conduct policy allows uh, employees at the company and external and internal activists to demand the same kind of censorship the misgendering policy did, not just on gender identity, but on a whole host of issues. So I really think this whole idea and concept of hate speech or hateful conduct needs to be jettisoned by the social media companies for there truly, truly to be free speech on their platforms. So it's a balancing act, it seems, from my perspective, because when you have absolute free speech, I mean, what does that look like? Uh, when, when do you uh, censor, uh, for example, misinformation, let's say, uh, hypothetically, disinformation and personal attacks? How do you balance uh, these things? And has he done a good job? Yeah, I mean, look, free speech under the First Amendment is not a free-for-all. And so there's, there's plenty of different ways in which you can regulate speech without risking uh, shutting down certain viewpoints. And the problem with the kind of policies that we see at, at X and so many of these other social media platforms is that they give the companies unbridled discretion to censor speech they don't like or that external activists don't like. Or for instance, in the case of the Twitter files, the government can come in and use those policies to try to force the companies, sometimes successfully, as we're seeing in the case that's at the Supreme Court right now on this issue, um, sometimes successfully urging them, coercing them to shut down speech the government doesn't like. So the companies need to get rid of those broad uh, policies, those vague policies, and adopt standards that are closer to the First Amendment. If they adopt those kinds of policies, they can still keep out all the riffraff, all the nasty speech, the personal attacks and harassment like you're talking about, um, but have a forum that's far more open for free spe speech and dialogue and debate. All right, Jeremy Tedesco, Alliance Defending Freedom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up, Ukrainian businesses prepare for another tough winter. Many worry that Russia will repeat a campaign of airstrikes on civilian infrastructure in the coming months. And soaring prices in Russia have left millions of families in limbo as the war continues in Ukraine. Will things improve as the country's 2024 elections approach? We'll have more soon when we return. What if you could whiten your teeth by simply brushing your teeth? Now you can with Smile Actives, the teeth whitening breakthrough that safely gets your teeth white and keeps them white every day just by brushing your teeth. I never thought that whitening my teeth could be so easy. I just put the gel on the brush, the toothpaste on it, brush, and I can see my white teeth. Simply add Smile Actives to any toothpaste and our patented PolyClean technology activates into a powerful microfoam that penetrates into the enamel surface to safely lift and remove stains. You need a simple way to whiten your teeth without strips, without trays, without going to the dentist. And it was about time that a product was developed that you would be able to do that with just brushing. And now Smile Actives is even better with new Pro Whitening Gel with 33% greater whitening power, clinically shown to whiten teeth faster, up to eight shades. 100% of users saw whiter teeth on food stains, coffee and wine stains, even on veneers, crowns, and dentures. I eat the blueberries, I drink the coffee, and I know that Smile Actives will keep my teeth white every day. If you could use something so easy like Smile Actives to take yellow teeth to white teeth, why wouldn't you? Why spend hundreds of dollars for whitening treatments at the dentist when now you can whiten your teeth with new Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel every time you brush your teeth? Call or go to smileactives.com and for a limited time, get new Pro Whitening Gel for just $24.95. Order in the next five minutes and buy one, get one absolutely free for just $24.95. That's two for one and save 58%. We'll even include free shipping. Get your teeth whiter guaranteed or return it within 60 days for your money back. I smile every day now. <laughs> The difference is literally night and day. So now I'm always smiling, always choosing, because now my teeth are much whiter. This offer is not available in stores, so call or click now before the special buy one, get one free offer goes away. A friend of mine, she told me about Bonatti. He was the only one to address all four discs as quickly as possible. And if you're to that point where you can't take it anymore, like I was, do your research, find out who the best is, 
and get it done. Visit askpanati.com. In a society that we were brought up in, it's very hard on little black boys. You have to navigate feelings and emotions so the world don't get you. Sometimes when I cry, I won't know how I'm feeling or why I'm crying. I just grew up never feeling like it was okay to cry. Yeah. And so he really forced me to have to reconnect with the kid that didn't get to cry. That's beautiful. I'm Kelly Wright in New York City, and we are NTD. Argentina's president-elect Javier Millet campaigned on promises of drastic changes to save the country from an economy spiraling out of control. Chief among them, cutting spending and government agencies. We spoke with the director of the Presidential Roller Coaster 2024 on Epic TV, Roger Simon, about Malay's background and his campaign promises and the links that have been drawn between the South American candidate and those currently vying for position in the U.S. Simon is also the author of a new book out in January titled American Refugees. Roger, welcome to our show. Thanks for coming on again. Oh, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Excellent. Now, have your... Malay, his, his policies are heavily libertarian. Uh, which aspects of his political background and his ideology do you think align with, uh, you know, the conservative movement here in the U.S.? Well, I could make a joke and say he used to play with a rock band, but I don't think that's really it. <laughs> the, <laughs> right. I mean, he aligns with the MAGA area of the um, conservative movement here because he's very libertarian. And, and, and in essence, MAGA is pretty libertarian. Maybe not as libertarian as Millet, who is, you know, uh, there's something called the Austrian school, very fancy, that um, these guys, Mises and Hayek and all these economists, um, started and it was very much a libertarian movement, and uh, he is a follower of this. Yeah, you've mentioned um, links. You mentioned the the rock star aspect, and there are links that are being drawn between Malay and Trump. What kinds of links do you see between Malay and U.S. politics? Well, I, I see uh, good news for Trump because this may be signaling the beginning of a MAGA type or libertarian, I would say, wave because people are getting a little sick of what the government's doing. I mean, the government is responsible for the open border, not, not the average citizen who hates it. So, uh, you know, uh, this may be, uh, you know, a harbinger of things to come in the United States. We'll see. But uh, you, it, it's certainly not hurt it. Right. And you also you wrote in the Epic Times about this potential shift that you're seeing also in terms of people's political ideology or their approach, perhaps culturally as well. What are you seeing there? It, well, uh, you know, you can, in, in the famous Breitbart thing of uh, politics is downstream of culture. I think, you know, culture has been ruined in our society by the lack of freedom. And libertarianism is a call for freedom, basically. I mean, it says you do your own thing in a certain way. And I think that's better for culture and it's better for politics. I could be wrong, but we're going to, I have been before. But I, I have suspect in this instance I am not. And that what we're going to be seeing is a movement in that direction. But, you know, it's not done because... This is a very, uh, American society is very split, maybe less split than Argentinian. One thing we have to remember is they had uh, an inflation rate of 134%. Can you imagine what that is? I mean, it's, it's hard yeah. to, to grasp. It's, yes, it's like it's everything is quintupling every time you walk into yeah. the store. Someone <laughs> may say the, the voters thought it called for, you know, some kind of drastic measures. And he said that he's against I, gradualism that, that he just wants to take I, drastic action we'd be pretty fed up 
I mean, we've had uh, complaints about inflation here, but they, you know, it's not as bad. It's, uh, it's but it's still bad. But the thing about inflation that's interesting is, well, the rate's a little bit down now, but it's on top of a rate that was going on at seven percent for a couple of years. So you know, the price of eggs is way up there, and it's not going down. So the same irritation will come up in our election. Right, and. Malay has, despite his calls for drastic change, he's already signaled that that may be somewhat difficult for him, saying Argentine law restricts him from doing away with some of the agencies that he has campaigned on doing away with, or, you know, perhaps not necessarily committing to converting to the U.S. dollar. What do you think of this, these rumblings among Well, his it's interesting. I mean, you know, everything is rigged. <laughs> in a certain way. I linked on my article, and people can see the link, to a, a very funny video of him uh, uh, pulling off all the agencies from a whiteboard. You know, <laughs> this one's gone, that one's gone, and it, with nothing left. But uh, in the when the rubber meets the proverbial road, uh, all of a sudden, you can't wait a minute. So, uh, it, it, and, you know, there have been a lot of rumblings in our society. First of all, get rid of the Department of Education. Um, which is a relatively new thing that came in with Jimmy Carter. I mean, he invented that, but uh, and that can probably go, but the but but not everything can go that we think can go, uh, or would want to go, or dream would go. So, um, and, and they met that problem down there. Right. So we'll have to see whether it's a matter of fixing or totally discarding in which areas, and both here and in Argentina, I suppose, going forward. Thank you so much, Roger Simon, author of American Refugees, out January 9th, and the director of the Presidential Roller Coaster 2024 on Epic TV. Thank you. Thank you. And now the top stories from Russia and Ukraine and other countries in Europe. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is meeting with U.S. military personnel in Poland this morning. This comes after Austin's visit to Ukraine on Monday, where he met with President Volodymyr Zelensky. Austin's trip to Kyiv was a high-profile push to keep money and weapons flowing to Ukraine. That's as U.S. and international resources are stretched by the Israel-Hamas war. Austin announced that the U.S. would be sending an additional $100 million in weapons to Ukraine. You know, we'd like to live in a world we didn't require air defense capabilities, but what we've learned uh, from both uh, uh, what we're doing with, in support of Ukraine what we're doing in support of Israel is that air defense continues to play a significant role. We learned that in the Middle East over and over and over again. Russia today saying it cannot coexist with Ukraine's current government. The Kremlin also says NATO should be held accountable for supporting the conflict and supplying weaponry. Russia added it can resist the NATO military alliance as long as needed to defeat Ukrainian forces. The current regime that exists on the territory of Ukraine has proven to be completely toxic. We do not currently see any options to coexist with it. Russia's statements come as Ukraine is celebrating its day of dignity and freedom. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky released a video statement today. He says Ukrainians will not allow their freedom to be taken away. When the civilized world starts looking for compromises with terrorists and making concessions to tyrants, then we will all lose. Ukraine, Europe, the world. We lose naively thinking that there can be a draw with them. A draw is impossible. Germany plans to provide Ukraine with further military and amounting to military aid amounting to over $1.4 billion. This aid package will include an additional IRST air defense unit. Altogether, it's a package of 1.3 billion euros, and I'm quite sure this is the fifth package since last winter. This will help uh, you in your fight against the Russian aggression. NATO Secretary General continues his peacekeeping tour in Eastern Europe. Jen Stoltenberg speaking in Serbia today after his visit to Bosnia yesterday. This comes after violent clashes in the region in May. The clashes took place in Kosovo, a country often claimed by surrounding nations to be part of their own.
In May, our K4 troops uh, were attacked. Uh, 93 of them uh, were wounded. Some suffered life-changing injuries. In September, we saw another outbreak of uh, serious violence in Kosovo. This is unacceptable. Uh, the facts must be established. The perpetrators must face justice. Automaker Stellantis is partnering with China's CATL to build a battery plant in Europe. The European car maker is looking to make cheaper batteries and more affordable EVs. It would be CATL's latest investment in the region as the Chinese company expands outside its home market. There are no details yet about the location of the planned gigafactory. Over 200 mobsters were sentenced to prison in Italy's biggest mafia trial in three decades. An Italian court sentenced the 200 crime gang members to a total of 2,200 years in prison. The trial has been underway since 2021. Over 300 people were charged, 100 were acquitted. The trial was held in a specially built bunker in southern Italy. More than 400 lawyers represented the defendants and around 900 witnesses provided testimony. Those convicted include a lawyer, police chief and various politicians. The mobsters were convicted of charges ranging from mafia association, extortion, bribery and murder. Among the defendants were 42 women, which is a record for a mafia trial. 39 of them were convicted. Ukrainian businesses are preparing for the prospect of another winter plagued by widespread power outages. Many are concerned that Russia will repeat a campaign of airstrikes on civilian infrastructure in the coming months. NTD's Andrew Thomas has the details on the bakery's struggle for survival. Regular missile and drone strikes beginning last October targeted critical facilities like power stations. Ukraine suffered blackouts and water shutoffs throughout the country, including at Natalia Shadrina's Kyiv bakery. All things considered, we are a nation that adapts easily. We survived last year and are preparing for this one. When I ask my employees if they are scared, they say no. We know what to expect. We have prepared the generator and will update our plans according to the situation. We are calm and prepared. Engineers labored over the summer to repair broken equipment. Better Ukrainian air defenses could help mitigate the damage as temperatures begin to drop. Shadrina's bakery feeds those living in war-ravaged parts of the country. When our bakery operated at a previous location, we had frequent power outages. Even at the beginning of this year, we couldn't work. But after our friends from Norway gifted us the electric generator, we had enough power to bake bread that our country needs. The bakery also exclusively employs people with mental disabilities. On a recent morning, workers were busy baking various kinds of bread. Some products were emblazoned with a trident, Ukraine's coat of arms. Despite the bakery's preparations, the prospect of more strikes still looms large over Shadrinda's staff. Logistics manager Ivan Zinchenko was irritated the last time the power went out. The power outages were the most frustrating thing we had ever encountered. 10 or 15 people on a shift with nothing to do until the power came back. But it's the not knowing that bothers him the most. What scares me the most is the uncertainty of what's going to happen. Many businesses are struggling to adapt to the wartime environment. Some have had to cut staff. Others have gone out of business entirely. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. And millions of Russian families are having to cut back. That's due to the significant changes forced on the country's economy by the war in Ukraine, as well as sanctions imposed by the West. An economist says about 20 million people might be in or on the verge of poverty. Here's more. In grocery stores across Russia, prices have been soaring. Families are having to cut back as they grapple with high inflation caused by the war in Ukraine and a myriad of sanctions imposed by the West. Mother of two, Daria Stepanova, is among them. One of my kids is five. Another one is a newborn. And I can see how much everything has become more expensive in the course of these five years. Pampers are two to three times more expensive now. Baby food is now four times more expensive. 
She's trying to make ends meet on the 50,000 rubles, about $550 a month, that her husband earns. The ruble has fallen against the U.S. dollar since the war began in February 2022, making the price of imported goods climb. And all this comes ahead of the 2024 election, where Vladimir Putin is expected to run again, in a move that would keep him in power until at least 2030. Official statistics show that over 15 million Russians are living below the poverty line. Russian economist Igor Lipitz says the situation is even worse than what the Kremlin reports. He estimates about 20 million people could be in or on the verge of poverty. The indirect indicator of the situation with the income is the level of high debt ratio that is always discussed again if you take statistics of the Bank of Russia. It's all seen there, how many Russians have two or three loans, how many families spend not only 50%, but around 80% of their monthly income. There are Russian regions where people have to give away 105% of their monthly income. 105. This is what real people's incomes are and how deep in poverty the Russian population lives. Russians are in deep trouble. Some economists think the ruble could fall even further after the election. Coming up, olive tree thefts are on the rise across the Mediterranean. How are growers responding and what does it mean for your olive oil? And are we living in a simulation? A new study suggests that our perception of reality is limited and that physics behaves like a computer. The theory has even won the support of Elon Musk. And if you're in New York City, you will be able to experience a walk through celestial stars. More on the new exhibition in just a moment here on NTD News Today. I'm excited to announce that we're having our biggest Christmas sale ever. You get our brand new six piece My Towels for only $29.98, or rejuvenate your bed with a My Pillow mattress topper as low as $99.99. Or how about My Pillow bed sheets for as low as $24.98? There's something for everyone duvets, quilts, down comforters, body pillows, bolster pillows, and so much more. Well, I know my pillow products make for the perfect Christmas gifts, so I'm gonna extend my money back guarantee until March 1st, 2024. So go to mypillow.com now or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get huge discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you get our six piece towels for only $29.98. Or get your very own my pillow bed sheets for as low as twenty four ninety eight. It's our biggest Christmas sale ever. Get all your shopping done now while quantities last. You have one new message. Doctor Bonatti, this is Norm Evans. I played for the Dolphins and the Seahawks. Anyway, I was just calling to say thank you to you again because I'm feeling great. No more back or neck problems after all these years. And I'm doing well, thanks to you. I just wanted to say thank you and let you know I was thinking about you. I always do. Okay, God bless you, friend. Keep up the good work. Visit askbenati.com. Anyone who's ever sold a home can tell you it is really hard. That's why who you work with matters. Together with Homelight, we've helped thousands of people sell faster and for the best price. Looking for a healthy and smooth tasting brew? Drop by Day's Coffee Roasters today and explore our wide selection of specialty grade small batch roasted coffee. Home to North America's first enzyme fermented coffee, we source a wide selection of specialty grade coffee beans from around the world 
and our baristas are ready to craft your customized brew. Visit Day's Coffee at 28 North Street, Middletown, New York. Come experience a brew like no other. All of growers across the Mediterranean are facing rising thefts. Robbers chop off heavily loaded branches, even the entire trees. Some growers have to harvest early to avoid damages and settle for lower yields, which could push prices of olive oil even higher. Take a look. It's near the harvest season. An olive grower in Greater Athens is patrolling his grove. He reveals the stump of an olive tree cut down by robbers. He says it was more than a hundred years old. Yeah. I believe that in other countries they would be protected. At the very least, this would be a felony, because this is a felony. You are killing your own history here. Olive oil prices have tripled in the past four years, according to records. It has presented criminals across the Mediterranean with an opportunity. Warehouse break-ins, accounting scams and oil tampering are on the rise in the olive-growing heartlands of Greece, Spain and Italy. Many times the olive robbers produce more oil than the growers themselves. With growing frequency, gangs use chainsaws to hack off branches and cut down entire trees at unguarded groves. They look for heavily loaded branches and they cut them. So not only do they steal our olives, but they cause the trees serious harm. It takes four to five years for it to return to normal. It's tragic what they do. Chainsaw robbers are driving growers to harvest early and settle for lower yields to try and avoid long-term damage. Last year, 3.7 kilograms of olives would produce a kilogram of oil. Now it's close to 10 kilos of olives for a kilo of oil. For my 600 kilos of olives, I will get 60 kilos of oil. Last year, I got 180. With global demand remaining high, international importers are often willing to offer prices above domestic rates. Year on year, exports from Greece more than doubled in the first five months of this year, while Turkey in August suspended exports to protect its domestic market. I think that the problem from Christmas, or let's say from Easter onwards, will be very serious. It will not just be a problem of price. I believe that the production will not be enough to cover our needs. The thefts add to olive growers' misery caused by rising temperature, higher fertilizer prices and labor shortages. Spain, a country that typically covers 40% of the world's supply, was hit by a near two-year drought. A new study supports the idea of order behind reality, likening it to a computer. The theory contradicts Darwinian theory and could have implications for science and technology. The hypothesis has won support from Elon Musk. A physicist at the University of Portsmouth suggests the universe behaved just like a computer in ordering and deleting unnecessary information. He said that's a sign that reality could be a construct, like what's suggested in the film The Matrix. I don't want to paraphrase Morpheus from, <laughs> from, from Matrix, but he said what is real. Uh, the, all the senses that we have, they are just electrical signals that are being um, decoded by our brains, which are, what is this? Is a biological computer. There's nothing more. Vobson says he spotted the behavior accidentally when studying COVID genome mutations and realized that contrary to the Darwinian consensus, they are not random and always result in a reduction in entropy. His findings contradict the second law of thermodynamics, a central tenet of scientific thinking, which establishes that entropy can only increase or stay the same. Entropy is a measure of disorder in an isolated system. The second law of um, uh, information dynamics requires all systems, including biological life, to evolve in a way that their information entropy and if, in, in information content, if you want, shrinks and is reduced to the optimal, most optimal possible value. It's compressed in a way that exactly what computers do and computer programs. His previous research suggests that information is the fundamental building block of the universe and has physical mass and should be regarded as the fifth state of matter. 
And then you, it begs the question, so what is the role of this information? What is this, all this missing stuff? 95% we can't find, we can't see. Well, that's the code. Maybe that is the code that runs the simulation. And we are in it, and we, can't, we experience it in a very bizarre way, by, by limited means. The simulated universe hypothesis has some high-profile supporters, including Elon Musk, with a branch of science known as information physics, which suggests everything is fundamentally made up of bits of information. Bobson is currently crowdfunding to further his research, hoping to prove or disprove his theories. Wish upon 500,000 stars. Check out this breathtaking image of the galaxy from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. It shows the Milky Way in never-before-seen detail. The telescope used infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye, to create the image. It revealed new features and mysteries within the chaotic region that could help astronomers unravel more details about the early universe. Studying the Milky Way's center with Webb could provide insights into how many stars form there. And it could shed light on whether massive stars are more likely to form near the galactic center or the galaxy's spiral arms. A new exhibition invites guests to walk through celestial stars at the Queen's Botanical Garden in New York City. It's called Astralumina. Astralumina is all about meeting the stars. The stars are falling from the sky and we get to meet them, have some fun with them until they get back home. Through light, video and music, you will meet the star that will come here in Queen's Botanical Garden, live there are different, um, different uh, phenomena. So uh, it's a 60 minute experience for all the family. The art installation was brought to life by multimedia entertainment studio Moment Factory. It combines lighting, projections and sound to create an immersive experience. The trail is adorned with lasers and tiny star-like lights. They cast a celestial glow that guides visitors through the garden that's combined with sound effects emanating from concealed speakers. The creative director says the exhibition aims to immerse people of all ages in an imaginative, magical world. Astralumina opens to the public at the Queen's Botanical Garden this Friday. And if you have any news tips or feedback for the show, please feel free to email us at news.today at ntd.com. Do you feel the bills getting higher and higher every time you check out at the supermarket? Do you feel your monthly discretionary money has decreased, although your income increases yearly? Inflation is eating away at your wealth. Digital wallets and central bank digital currencies are destroying financial privatization. Only gold and silver are constitutional forms of money. Our privacy was to be protected against unlawful search and seizure. Midas Gold Group will help you take control of your finances and protect your wealth and your privacy. Pulling money out of the corrupt banking and investment system is a way to privatize your finances as the elite push us towards digital wallets and central bank digital currency. Protect your wealth with real money. Deal with the best. Midas Gold Group, a proud America First company. MidasGoldGroup.com To a child, this is what conflict looks like. Children in Ukraine are caught in the crossfire of war, forced to flee their homes. A steady stream of refugees has been coming across all day. It's bitterly cold. Lacking clean water and sanitation, exposed to injury, hunger. Exhausted um, and shell-shocked from what they've been through. Every dollar you give can help bring a meal, a blanket, or simply hope to a child living in conflict. Please call or go online to give now to save.org today with your gift of $10 a month. That's just 33 cents a day. We cannot forget the children in places like Syria, born in refugee camps, playing in refugee camps, thinking of the camps as home. Please call or go online to give now to save.org today 
with your gift of $10 a month. Your gift can help children like Ara in Afghanistan, where nearly 20 years of conflict have forced the people into extreme poverty. Weakened and unable to hold herself up, Ara was brought to a Save the Children Center where she was diagnosed and treated for severe malnutrition. Every dollar helps. Please, call or go online to GiveNowToSave.org today with your gift of $10 a month, just 33 cents a day. And thanks to special government grants that are available now, every dollar you give can multiply up to 10 times the impact. And when you use your credit card, you'll receive this special Save the Children tote bag to show you won't forget the children who are living their lives in conflict. Every war is a war against children. Please, give now. I'm Don Ma in New York City, and we are NTD News. Welcome to NTD News Today. Here are our top stories. Hostage talks at a critical point. Reports say Hamas has proposed releasing some 50 hostages in exchange for days of ceasefire. What did the Israeli Prime Minister say? Utah voters head to the polls today for a special election to replace Republican Congressman Chris Stewart. Find out how the race is likely to turn out. Border security or foreign aid? What do taxpayers want their money spent on? A new national poll shed some light. One of former President Trump's co-defendants could have his bond revoked, while the judge in Georgia is considering bringing him into custody. A long hidden room inside a Florence chapel, now open to visitors. The charcoal sketches on the walls might be the work of Renaissance artist Michelangelo. A 94-year-old artist remains just as passionate about her work today as she was when she was started painting. New technology allows for new opportunities. This is NTD News Today, live from our NTD Global Headquarters. Here are Stephania Cox and Chris Beers. Hello and welcome to NTD News Today. We have insights and perspectives on the stories shaping our world. Breaking news, in-depth analysis, and inspiration to power your day. Now for our top stories. Negotiations underway to free hostages taken by Hamas. According to NBC News, a possible deal would include the exchange of some 50 women and children for Palestinian prisoners held by Israel as well as a four to five day ceasefire. The Israeli government is reportedly voting on the deal today. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he hoped for good news soon about hostages. His office said he would convene his war cabinet this morning. That's quote, in light of developments in the matter of the release of our hostages. Jonathan Shanzer is Senior Vice President for Research at Foundation for Defense Democracies. He posted on X that 53 hostages are set to be released, including 40 kids and 13 mothers. According to Israel, Hamas took about 240 hostages in the October 7th attack. Washington believes that 10 Americans are among them. President Biden is pledging to counter the flow of fentanyl into the U.S. He held a meeting at the White House this morning, giving an overview of the steps he's been taking. They include working together with countries such as China and Mexico. Last week in San Francisco, we made important progress with both China and Mexico to strengthen our efforts to address this scourge. During my meeting with President Xi, we took a critical step of resuming counter-narcotics cooperation between our two countries. It was one of the important things we agreed upon. From primary to general election debates, we now know the dates and locations for the three debates next year. And you might see a third party candidate on stage for the first time in three decades. The Commission on Presidential Debates announced three dates for general election debates next year. The first one is set for September 16th at Texas State University. The second one is on October 1st at Virginia State. And the third on October 9th at the University of Utah. One vice presidential debate is scheduled for September 25th at Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. 
qualify for the events, candidates are, and their running partners must have at least 15% in national polls. Third-party candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is averaging almost 17% at the moment. He'd be the first third-party candidate on stage since Ross Perot in 1992. The campaign for former President Trump says Trump is looking forward to debating President Biden at the event. However, it's not clear whether Biden will join. His team reportedly declined to comment on the recently announced debates. Utah voters head to the polls today for a special election to replace Republican Congressman Chris Stewart. Stewart announced in May that he was resigning to care for his ill wife. Republicans Celeste Malloy and State Senator Kathleen Reby are competing to represent the state's 2nd District. Malloy is Stewart's former chief counsel. Reby is the minority whip in the Utah State Senate. Malloy has campaigned on issues like improving border security and reining in federal spending. Reby has been advocating for affordable housing and support for labor unions. Malloy won a Republican special primary on September 5th. Reby ran unopposed for her party's nomination. Malloy is the heavy favorite in the Republican-leaning congressional district. A majority of American voters seem to agree on the need for increased funding for security along the U.S.-Mexico border. That's according to a recent NBC News national poll. Roughly 74% of registered voters support more funding for border security, with over 90% of Republicans and around 60% of Democrats in favor. But when it comes to more funding for foreign countries involved in conflicts, including Israel and Ukraine, fewer then 60 percent support it. The poll also finds that Democrats are more inclined to support humanitarian aid to Gaza and aid for Ukraine, while Republicans are more supportive of funding and military aid to Israel. There's also a generational gap, with younger voters less likely to support funding for Israel. Now turning to former President Trump's Georgia election case. One of the co-defendants in the case, Harrison Floyd, is having his bond reconsidered. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee will be hearing arguments this afternoon on whether to revoke Floyd's bond. Floyd was a leader in the organization Black Voices for Trump. He was the only defendant who spent time in jail after his indictment. That's because he's the only one who didn't have a lawyer reach an agreement on bond conditions before he turned himself in at the Fulton County Jail. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis last week asked the judge to revoke Floyd's bond. She said Floyd has been attempting to intimidate and contact likely witnesses and his co-defendants in violation of the terms of his release. Floyd's attorneys denied the accusations, calling Willis's request a retaliatory measure. The United Auto Workers Union is looking to expand. The president, Sean Fain, is saying workers and non-union automakers should consider joining. They spend billions of dollars on, on consulting groups to come in and discourage workers from wanting a union. Why do they do that? They, they, because the companies know they, they want the workers not to understand the power they'll have if they join a union. The union secured significant pay raises, improved benefits, and a slew of other concessions. The details were hashed out following six weeks of strikes. Last week, about two-thirds of the workers at General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis voted to approve the new deal. The contract is among the best in the union's 88-year history. Now, non-union companies are also increasing their wages and benefits. Fain said this is the momentum from UAW. He added that the time is right for labor unions to grow like they did in the 1930s and 40s. He's specifically eyeing foreign automakers like Toyota, electric vehicle makers like Tesla, and EV battery plants. Congress is demanding answers about Ticketmaster's policies. A Senate subcommittee issued a subpoena to the entertainment company saying it has refused to supply documents about its business practices. Ticketmaster and its parent company Live Nation grabbed some unwanted attention last year when many concertgoers had trouble accessing its website to get Taylor Swift tickets. There also were issues with Bruce Springsteen tickets because of their cost. The debacles raised questions about the company's ticket pricing, fees, and resale policies. Senators grilled Live Nation's president during a hearing in January, but the senators say they still have more questions. 
A spokesperson says the company has voluntarily worked with the Senate subcommittee from the start and has provided extensive information but wants some of its business practices to remain confidential. Coming up, asking unvaccinated soldiers to come back. The Army wants soldiers who didn't get the COVID shot to return to service. This after unvaccinated soldiers were deemed a security threat. And modern toys could pose new dangers for kids. A consumer watchdog report cites microphones, cameras, location trackers, and other features. More in just a moment here on NTD News Today. One in five children worldwide are faced with the reality of living without food. No family dinners, no special treats, no full bellies. All around the world, parents are struggling to feed their children. Toddlers are suffering from acute malnutrition, which stunts their growth. Kids are forced to drop out of school so they can help support their families. COVID, conflict, inflation, and climate have ignited the worst famine in our lifetime. And we're fed up. Fed up with the fact that hunger robs children of their childhood. Fed up with the lack of progress. Fed up with the injustice. Help us brighten the lives of children all over the world by visiting getfedupnow.org. For as little as $10 a month, you can join Save the Children as we support children and families in desperate need of our help. Now is the time to get fed up and give back. When you join the cause, your $10 monthly donation can help communities in need of life-saving treatments and nutrients, prevent children from dropping out of school, support our work with communities and governments to help children go from short-term surviving to long-term thriving. And now, thanks to special government grants, every dollar you give before December 31st can multiply up to 10 times the impact. That means more food, water, medicine, and help for kids around the world. You'll also receive a free tote bag to share your support for children in need. Childhood without food is unimaginable. Get fed up. Call us now or visit getfedupnow.org today. Anyone who's ever sold a home can tell you it is really hard. That's why who you work with matters. Together with Homelight, we've helped thousands of people sell faster and for the best price. Got a new house. A place that I call home. The Army now turning to a new source of possible recruits, unvaccinated former soldiers. This comes after the military kicked out soldiers who refused to get the COVID vaccine. The Army sent a letter to former personnel writing, individuals who desire to apply to return to service should contact their local recruiter for more information. This as the military struggles to draw recruits. The Army booted almost 2,000 personnel for not receiving a COVID vaccine. A 2022 statement said unvaccinated soldiers present a risk to the force and jeopardize readiness. Now the vaccine mandate is no longer in effect. Multiple military branches have been struggling to attract new recruits in recent years. 
and modern toys could be putting children in danger. A consumer watchdog report cited microphones, cameras, location trackers, and other features pose a new threat. One of the report's authors called the findings chilling. The nonprofit cited the kidnapping of an 11 year old girl he encountered while playing Roblox, one of the most popular online games. She's recovered safely more than 100 miles from her home. The public interest group also referred to a case against Amazon. The federal government alleges that e commerce giant kept recordings of children's voices gathered from its Alexa devices. The watchdog advised parents to think twice when purchasing gifts for their children this holiday season. The holiday shopping season is right around the corner, and we want to know about the best deals this season. Our business host, Don Ma, is joining us. Don, where do you find the best prices for holiday shopping this year? Well, Chris, uh, let me just start off and say that we got some uh, research highlights from the company called WalletHub. Uh, they sent NTD uh, some of their points in, in terms of where the best deals are. And let me just highlight some of them. JCPenney, Macy's, and Belk are some of the best places to get discounts uh, for your holiday shopping. Uh, according to their research, an uh, average of 55% in terms of discounts on average between the three stores at, at min minimum. So that's, that's very good for anyone who goes there frequently to shop, whether online or in person. But you got to watch out, though. S sometimes on Black Friday, you know, they say items are on sale, not particularly at these stores, but in general. But they're actually not. So one tip that I have to, you know, avoid that is to think of what you want to buy as of right now and take note of the prices of this particular item and keep that at a, in a safe place and then when uh, Black Friday comes around just compare the prices to see if it is actually on deal on sale or not um, and let me talk about furniture if anyone's thinking of getting new furniture this Black Friday uh, it seems like uh, it's going to be the least rewarding in terms of deals so let's keep that in mind uh, but if you want to get something small for your colleague uh, you know uh, for Black Friday or whatever um, the best gift, gift cards of 2023 uh, goes to Starbucks and Sephora. So, you know, if you, if you want to give your colleagues something nice, you know, that's something to consider. Uh, but if you want uh, specific items and if they're on sale or not, you know, head on over to wallethub.com. Uh, actually, you took a look at uh, some of their lists and they, they have a, quite a good list in terms of uh, specific items. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Don, what will consumer spending look like this season? Well, it seems like uh, it might not be as strong as some would like, according to Walmart's latest earnings call. Uh, they gave a more cautious outlook in terms of uh, consumer spending uh, because of rising uh, interest rates and inflation as well. Uh, shoppers, it seems like, could be very choosy this time around. They might want to wait for more deals. Uh, and uh, could be Black Friday, could be uh, other sale opportunities. And according to the National Retail Federation, it seems like spending growth this holiday season compared to previous years might be just a little bit slower. And uh, businesses could be catching on to this point as well because it seems like uh, they are hiring slow, slower in terms of uh, how much uh, new recruits they want for this holiday season uh, because you know if consumers aren't buying uh, then businesses of course they don't want to over hire uh, it, it's not good for their bottom line uh, so potentially you know a milder outlook for this uh, holiday season what else do you have for us today don sure uh, according to a new reuters poll strategists say that a possible u.s economic slowdown or recession could be among the biggest risks uh, for financial markets in 2024, in fact. A strategist at Wells Fargo Investment Institute says he expects the economy to weaken further into 2024. And he says that at some point, he expects the consumer to break. And meanwhile, the latest reading on the conference board's leading economic index has continued to flash recession signs. Now, a recession is guaranteed to hit eventually. The only question is when it may not be next year but the question is when 
And on to other news. A win for automaker Tesla. The, the company beat a lawsuit claiming it monopolizes repairs and parts. A U.S. judge dismissed an antitrust lawsuit accusing Elon Musk's electric car company of forcing customers to pay high prices and endure long waits for repairs. Uh, and the lawsuit alleged that the company did this by monopolizing vehicle maintenance and replacement part markets. So the judge in the case says the plaintiffs could not prove they didn't know about all these things before buying Tesla cars. And that's all from me. Great. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, Don. Thanksgiving is just days away, and after a good meal comes a nap. But do you know why? Well, experts say don't just blame the turkey for your holiday food coma. According to a sleep specialist, turkey contains tryptophan. It's an amino acid needed to make serotonin, which is a hormone that regulates our sleep cycle. Many foods contain it, like cheese, chicken, egg whites, and fish, to name just a few. And also, don't forget the impact of holiday drinking. Experts believe it would take about eight pounds of turkey meat to lull you into a food coma. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recommends serving one pound of turkey meat per person this holiday. And inflation is down again this month, and Thanksgiving dinner is going to be cheaper on average than last year. But it's still going to be pricier than before the pandemic. According to the American Farm Bureau Federation, Thanksgiving dinner for 10 people will cost $61.17 on average this year. That's 4.5% less than last year's record high of $64.05. But it's still 25% more than 2019. The costs vary by location. According to MoneyGeek.com, the priciest metro area for a Thanksgiving meal is Seattle at $176. Second and third place are Honolulu and the Portland metro area in Oregon. The Texas metro area of El Paso and Brownsville, Harlingen are tied for the cheapest Thanksgiving meal at less than $125. What side dishes do you plan to serve with your turkey this Thanksgiving? Are they pretty basic or do you like to switch it up? with the menu some years. From cranberry relish to sweet potatoes to green bean casserole, there are so many options. Now, Google has come out with a list of the most searched side dishes for each state. The data was compiled between October 6th and November 6th. Many states seem to love casseroles. The most searched one overall was green bean casserole. However, some states like Hawaii, Kansas, and Wyoming searched for more unique side dishes bruschetta, cucumber salad, and creamy polenta. If you're driving to your Thanksgiving holiday destination, get ready for a break at the pump. Gas prices are expected to be at the lowest level since 2020, but as we know, road trip costs can add up quickly. Here are five tips to get better mileage and save money if you're hitting the road. More than 49 million people are expected to hit the road this Thanksgiving holiday. According to AAA, that's up 1.7% from last year. The demand for travel just continues to go up year after year. And this Thanksgiving is no exception. And drivers will be greeted with a welcome sight at the gas pump. Gas prices are tumbling fast across the country. According to GasBuddy.com, national average Thanksgiving gas prices could hit their lowest levels since 2020. Overall, Americans are going to be greeted with gas gas prices out on average are about 45 cents lower than what they were last year. Despite the break at the pump, road trip expenses can add up. So what can you do to minimize costs? Gas Buddy has these five tips. First, plan your trip well. The state where you fill up will impact prices and those costs add up every time you fuel up. Some states like California, the average is still $4.95, while some states like Texas are almost $2 a gallon lower at about $2.75 a gallon. Number two, watch your speed. Slowing down even a few miles per hour on the highway can increase your fuel efficiency. Three, shop around. Don't just pull over at the nearest station and use apps to help you find the cheapest gas near you. It always can pay to shop around, especially with prices now declining for nine straight weeks. Some stations are lowering their prices much quicker than others. Four, take advantage of perks. Consider signing up for loyalty programs to get discounts or use a rebate credit card. And finally, pay in cash. Some stations offer cash discounts. Weather may have an impact on travel itineraries this week. The Federal Aviation Administration warned that storms could hold up flights bound for Atlanta, Charlotte, Washington, D.C., and other East Coast airports today. Still, flight cancellations remain low.
According to tracking site FlightAware, about 13,000 flights have been delayed today, but just about 20 were canceled. Hopefully these issues won't cause significant disruptions on Wednesday, the busiest travel day of the holiday season. The FAA forecasted more than 49,000 planes in the sky the day before Thanksgiving. Today is a close second with more than 48,000 planes flying. To handle the influx, air traffic controllers will be using airspace usually set aside for other purposes like military flights. Here's a consumer alert to pass along. There's a reported listeria outbreak in several states linked to some fruits. HMC Farms has recalled peaches, plums and nectarines sold between May 1st and November 15th, both this year and last year. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says one person died and a woman went into early labor after becoming sick. Overall, 11 cases of listeria were reported in seven cases states. Three cases were reported in both California and Florida, with others in Colorado, Kansas, Illinois, Michigan, and Ohio. If you have any of this fruit, throw it out and clean surfaces and containers the fruit has come in contact with. Coming up, North Korea launches a missile and a likely third attempt to put a spicy satellite into orbit. The latest on tensions in the area. And the trapped workers inside a tunnel in India seen for the first time. A camera captures their condition more than a week after the tunnel collapsed. We'll have the details soon when we return. I'm excited to announce that we're having our biggest Christmas sale ever. You get our brand new six piece My Towels for only $29.98, or rejuvenate your bed with a My Pillow mattress topper as low as $99.99. Or how about My Pillow bed sheets for as low as $24.98? There's something for everyone. Duvets, quilts, down comforters, body pillows, bolster pillows, and so much more. Well, I know my pillow products make for the perfect Christmas gifts, so I'm going to extend my money back guarantee until March 1st, 2024. So go to mypillow.com now or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get huge discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you get our six piece towels for only $29.98. Or get your very own my pillow bed sheets for as low as $24.98. It's our biggest Christmas sale ever. Get all your shopping done now while quantities last. Freedom is not free, and neither is the truth. In order to bring you the facts, our reporters are out there on the front lines getting the true story. Some of them served 10 years of prison in China. We've been censored on social media. Our Hong Kong printing offices were set on fire and we've been repeatedly attacked by the Chinese Communist Party. But no matter what, we believe that you deserve the truth and so we continue to bring the truth to light. Head on over to getepic.com and try honor journalism that is based in truth and tradition. We'd love to have you on board. Is deep sea fish oil really healthy? Due to pollution in the oceans, most fish contain heavy metal elements and radioactive substances. That's why it's so important to choose a pure source of omega-3. Puritan green vegetable omega-3 is made from purslane and perillocene, which are rich in nutrients and minerals, especially vitamins A, D, E, calcium and iron. With natural processing and no harmful chemical additives, it has more than 90% concentration of omegas 3, 6, 7 and 9. It effectively improves brain power and is beneficial to the heart's health. Puritan Omega-3 does not smell fish and contains no pollutants, so both adults and children can safely and easily consume it over a long period of time. Puritan Green Vegetable Omega-3. Greener, healthier, and more effective. Visit puritan.com to learn more. In a society that we were brought up in, it's very hard on little black boys. You have to navigate feelings and emotions so the world don't get you. Sometimes when I cry, I won't know how I'm feeling or why I'm crying. I just grew up never feeling like it was okay to cry. Yeah. And so he really forced me to have to reconnect with the kid that didn't get to cry. That's beautiful. I'm David Lamb in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we are NTD News.
And now we have some quick headlines from the Asia Pacific region, starting with a rocket launch by North Korea. The rocket is believed to be carrying a military reconnaissance satellite. That's according to South Korean and Japanese officials. Japan says launching a satellite using ballistic missile technology is a violation of United Nations resolutions and that the country's defense system was ready for the satellite launch. To get ready for an unexpected situation, the Self-Defense Forces Aegis ships and Pac-3 missile defense units in Okinawa are already carrying out the necessary preparations. This would be North Korea's third attempt to place a satellite in orbit this year. South Korea's military stated that the rocket was aimed toward the south and carrying a spy satellite. It's not clear yet if the launch was successful. And to further deter North Korea's nuclear and missile programs, a U.S. aircraft carrier is now in South Korea. The USS Carl Vinson arrived at a port in the city of Busan today. In a statement, the South Korean rear admiral said it showed a strong combined defense posture. He added that it reflects a determined willingness to respond to North Korea's threats. It's common for U.S. warships to visit South Korea. A U.S. rear admiral said the visit demonstrates the two countries' alliance. And it's not just South Korea. The U.S. military will also be working with the Philippines. The two countries' militaries launched joint sea and air patrols in waters near Taiwan. The three-day exercise started today. The Philippine president said it's a significant initiative. The drill plans to start off around the Philippines' northernmost point, located about 60 miles from Taiwan. It will end in the South China Sea. Security engagements between the U.S. and the Philippines have soared this year, which hasn't released the Chinese regime, hasn't pleased the Chinese regime. And speaking of China, Australia is speaking out following a dangerous encounter with a Chinese warship last week. Australian Foreign Ministry Penny, Minister Penny Wong said the government expects all countries to operate military safely and professionally. An Australian Navy diver was injured when an Australian warship and a Chinese warship encountered each other in Japan's exclusive economic zone on November 14th. The Australian frigate was conducting a diving operation to clear fishing nets from its propellers when the Chinese destroyer approached. Australia says its ship notified the Chinese warship of the diving operation, but the vessel operated in a manner that posed a safety risk. The first is that the safety and well-being of Australian defence personnel uh, is our utmost priority. Uh, the second point I'd make uh, is to again reiterate that we have raised our serious concerns uh, with the Chinese authorities following what uh, was uh, we regard as unsafe and unprofessional interaction uh, with uh, the PLA Navy destroyer. And in India, authorities released the first video of the workers trapped inside a collapsed tunnel. A camera was sent into the tunnel through a new pipeline. The trapped workers are seen for the first time since the tunnel collapsed and rescue efforts began over a week ago. Preparations to start vertical drilling are continuing. Authorities say the workers are safe. They have access to light, oxygen, dry food, water and medicine through a pipeline. Doctors and mental health experts said the workers should practice yoga and meditation to cope with anxiety. In Papua New Guinea, a volcano erupted yesterday on the country's northeastern island of New Britain. Smoke and ash cloud could still be seen blanketing the sky a day later. The Japan Meteorological Agency said the volcanic eruption sent smoke as high as 50,000 feet. Some residents of the remote island were preparing today to evacuate from the vicinity. Some flights from the island's airport had been canceled. Papua New Guinea is on the Pacific Ring of Fire. It's a horseshoe-shaped band of volcanoes and fault lines circling the edges of the Pacific Ocean. House Republicans are calling for $12 billion to be added to the Indo-Pacific aid request. We speak with Grant Newsham, retired Marine Corps colonel and a senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy, for the latest on what Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher has called the priority theater. Grant Newsham, thank you for joining us. The Biden administration has said China is the biggest threat to the U.S., yet they're only allotting $2 billion for the Indo-Pacific aid request. This seems like a gap between words and actions. 
No, oh, there is, definitely. There has been for a long time. The China threat has been obvious for well over a decade. And yet the Pacific has always had trouble squeezing money out of Washington. That's just astonishing when you think about it. And this recent request for $10, $12 billion, this is about a day and a half worth of Medicare fraud. It's just absolutely nothing. And yet they have so much trouble getting funded for all the things that they need to do to take on China. Now, House Republicans are calling for an additional $12 billion for the Indo-Pacific. Does this go far enough? It gets you a long way. Your money goes a long way uh, in Asia. It goes a long way anywhere if you spend it right. Uh, this isn't enough, but it's something at least. And as I say, you can buy an awful lot of missiles. You can help your friends in a lot of different ways. You can bolster your own position. And you could spend it right, and you can do very well in the Pacific. But it doesn't uh, really change the overall context, which is a U.S. military which is not in shape to fight a war. Uh, the Navy, for example, needs to be built up fast, and there doesn't seem to be any plan or any idea of how they're actually going to build ships within the time needed, uh, much less restore the industrial base. So $12 billion is really just a Band-Aid out in the Pacific where it can do a lot of good. But the bigger uh, American requirements for its own defense are much, much bigger than that. Now, Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party Chairman Mike Gallagher, a Republican from Wisconsin, said, in order to safeguard peace in Asia and deter conflict on a scale we have not seen in generations, we must act before it's too late. Why should Americans care about the Indo-Pacific? Well, if America gets kicked out of the Indo-Pacific, and it's going to be kicked out because of some tens of thousands of Americans have died in the process, uh, that we're finished as a global power. Uh, anything that we want to do as a nation, we will have to ask China for its permission. And it will be the start of an era of dominance by a rapacious, vicious regime, such as we have never experienced. I think a lot of people never even imagined it was possible. Uh, the kind of life that we've enjoyed, forget about it if you get kicked out of Asia. And that is exactly what China is trying to do. We're not doing enough to stop them. Now let's look at Guam. Delegates from the territory are calling on Congress to increase the defenses there. Uh, what role does Guam play in the region that makes this request so significant for Congress? Well, Guam is pretty much your only decent base outside of Japan and Korea. Uh, you look at the map, but we don't have much else. Down in southern, uh, northern Australia, we might have a little bit. But Guam is the, the linchpin of America's Pacific defenses. The fact that they are even now talking about uh, beefing up Taiwan's, excuse me, Guam's defenses, missile defenses in particular, shows that we have not been led by serious people in uniform or out of uniform for a long time, with a few exceptions during the last administration. Uh, that's how bad it is, the fact we're still talking about it. Guam is immensely valuable. Lose it and try operating in the Pacific without it. It's just astonishing. It has not gotten the attention it deserves. And the people of Guam are about as pro-American as you can get. Look what good it's gotten them. Uh, actually, th there's now more attention being paid, but this is much too late. That needs to be pointed out. Moving over to Japanese waters, a Chinese military vessel injured an Australian diver with sonar after warnings. But what's the size of the impact of such incidents on yeah, growing tensions in the region? Well, if you ever needed any more evidence of what China's objectives are, just look at this. This was just a brazen act really of attempted harm, trying to injure Australian divers. Everything about this was wrong. The Chinese were in the wrong. They did it intentionally. And what Xi Jinping is looking for is an incident where foreigners or America's Americans or their allies get killed. That ought to tell you something. He's not concerned about it. We ought to be. Uh, and once again, there is no punishment that the Chinese receive for doing this other than some expressions of profound concern. If we're not going to take this seriously, well, we might as well go home now. All right, Grant Newsham, thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks very much. Visitors can soon access a long hidden area inside of Florence Chapel. Some experts say the charcoal sketches are the work of Renaissance artist Michelangelo. And a 94-year-old artist remains just as passionate about her work today as she was when she started painting. More shortly here on NTD News Today.
Did you know African elephants could become extinct in our lifetime? In fact, more than 90% are already gone. If we don't act now, they will disappear forever. But we can't do it alone, because when it comes to saving elephants, it's you plus IFAW, the International Fund for Animal Welfare. You plus IFAW together can help stop poaching, protect habitats, and save thousands of elephants. Call or go online right now to join ifaw.org and give $19 a month, only 63 cents a day. You can save elephants and the places they call home. Together, we can fund rangers to stop poachers in their tracks, protect the land elephants need to roam and survive, and provide loving care for those who have been orphaned so they can one day be released back into the wild. But the only way we can do this life-saving work is with you plus IFAW. So call or go online with your gift right now. With the monthly support of people just like you, elephants like Moses are alive and thriving today. It takes years of hard work from dedicated teams so orphaned elephants can learn the skills they need to survive in the wild. So please, call now or go online with your monthly gift. You can help provide the urgent care elephants need so this generation won't be the last. And when you use your credit card, you'll get this exclusive membership kit, including your very own IFAW t-shirt to show it's you plus IFAW standing together to help rescue and care for these majestic creatures. The danger for elephants is more urgent than ever before. That's why we need you. It's going to take all of us to help save elephants before they disappear forever. So please, call right away or go to joinifaw.org with your monthly gift because together, you plus IFA can save lives. Anyone who's ever sold a home will tell you it's really hard. And it's one of the biggest financial decisions you'll ever make. That's why who you work with matters. Together with Homelight, we take care of every detail. You're American, and then you come home and you're Honduran. I totally relate to that. Like, it's like double personality kind of thing. Thank you for staying with us. Visitors soon will be allowed to access a long hidden area inside of Florence Chapel. The walls are covered in charcoal sketches, which some experts say are the work of Renaissance artist Michelangelo. NTD's Andrew Thomas has the details. This secret room in the Medici chapels was used to store coal until 1955. The area was sealed and forgotten for decades beneath a trap door. The room was discovered in 1975 when they were searching for a new exit for the museum because of mus visitors increase in numbers. These drawings were discovered under two layers of plaster. They include sketches believed to be the legs of Michelangelo's statue Giuliano dei Medici. When the drawings were rediscovered, there was a fierce debate among art historians. Then the major scholars of Michelangelo drawings dismissed the attributions, others uh, had a more moderate view. The sculpture now sits at the entrance to the hidden room. There are some people um, identified previous works by Michelangelo, like um, a foreshortening of the figure of Eve, on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. For most of the last 50 years, access has been strictly restricted. Officials have decided to open the room to the public on a limited basis. There is a, a blow-up head of Laocon, which was a famous ancient group that was rediscovered in 1503 by, uh, in the Vatican, and Michelangelo was really impressed by it. From November 15th, up to 100 visitors a week can make a reservation. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. 
A 94-year-old artist says she's just as passionate about her work today as she was when she started painting. Now she's embracing new technology to express herself. NTD's Andrew Thomas has the details. June Bose Weller has spent 80 years in the Australian art industry, and it's been an incredible journey. It's always just been such a pleasure, such a, an important thing in my life. Doesn't matter what day goes by, somehow I've got to draw in that day. The 94-year-old was a pioneer of art therapy in Australia. It all started at a Melbourne hospital for soldiers returning from World War II. They would paint with me before the treatment and then paint with me after the treatment. And this was the beginning of OT, occupational therapy, art therapy. This passion has also been her salvation, and it's kept the 94-year-old painter vivacious. For me, art had become life, and without art, I don't think I would have lived as long. And she's still going strong. Today is National Gingerbread Cookie Day. It comes at the perfect time with the holiday season upon us. Many people will celebrate the holidays by turning to the cookies into gingerbread houses. Gingerbread has been around for centuries, dating back to at least 992 AD. To celebrate the holiday, you can either make your own gingerbread man or buy one of the kits and build a gingerbread house. That's all for today's news. Thank you for tuning in. Feel free to reach out to us with any news tips or feedback at news.today at ntd.com. And we'll be back with more stories tomorrow.